What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to my channel. Before I start this video, I want to say thank you to everybody that has reached out to me, everybody who has been supporting my channel. It truly means a lot to me, and I've seen everyone who's been following my following me on Instagram. Don't think I don't see it. I've been paying attention to everyone that's been following me on Instagram, messaging me on Facebook. Like, I really, truly appreciate that. It gives me... It gives me... It makes me so happy to see that I am giving good feedback to everybody and everyone's enjoying these videos. I've had a couple people reach out to me that they've had similar things happen and... You know, so I really appreciate all of the motivation and support that you guys have been giving. Also, I've met a lot of awesome people. I did these uh, group meetings, like you can FaceTime with people. Um, so I've been, I've met so many people and I am just so happy that these are finally helping somebody out. And even people that are just getting diagnosed, I hope this helps you out too. But keep messaging me, I love it. Um, don't ever think you're bothering me. It could be any time of the day, 1 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't care. So, I love it. Also, if you guys can, give me a follow on Instagram. If you don't want to follow me, that's okay. But just start sending me some questions because my next video, I'm going to do a Q&A. Hopefully, if I get enough, you know, questions. But, yeah, keep sharing all this. Um... Hopefully it gets somewhere that we can become a whole group. And that's what I also wanted to say. I want to make a group of all of us that we can all become friends, do whatever. I'm still thinking of ideas, um, but even do like monthly Zoom meetings or something. I don't know. I think that would be super awesome. So if you're interested in that, message me so I can start working up some ideas. But I want this to become like a whole support group, friends, everything. I don't know. I'm still working on it. But so on to the video. As you can see in the description below, we are talking about the five stages that I went through during coping with the disease. So again, if you didn't go through this, everyone's different, you know. Don't think that you're going to go through the things that I went through. Everyone's different, okay? So let's get started. The first one that I'm talking about, oh wait, the five that I'm talking about are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. So I found out about all these, um, I don't know how, but it just came up of like the stages of coping while grieving, but it's kind of crazy that these are a thing because they kind of relate to me so much. I mean, one of them I didn't really go through, but I went through all these. I'm like, wow, this is a thing. And I didn't know that people went through this. You know what I mean? So like there's stages and you guys probably know about this, but I didn't. So yeah. So let's start off with the denial. So when I was first diagnosed, I did go through denial, which didn't last super long it lasted about maybe a few months I guess um but it was just the first of the diagnosis uh, first of the diagnosis of getting diagnosed with MS getting diagnosed with something that's not curable which is sounds scary but I mean you know it that's that's all the things that were coming on me like I was like oh my god like, this is crazy you know oh and um I'm reading off my paper, so if you see me looking down, I wrote notes out so I don't go off topic, because I do that a lot, and then the videos turn into 30 minutes, see I'm doing it now, okay, but yeah, so if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my paper, because I wrote notes, okay, but anyway, so the denial part, I literally, like, refused that, like, this was a thing, I didn't believe it, I thought maybe there's something else that's happening, like, you know, when you all the time when I, like when I had surgery on my shoulder like there's things that are probably gonna fix this like it's definitely not a mess like I'm fine you know I chose not to believe it yet um it was kind of it was just hearing those words it was like my life flashed before my eyes like wow this is about to be crazy like my life is about to change like a whole 360 you know 
So that was kind of like hard to ex- like to what's the word I'm looking for to like swallow, I guess. Like it was just hard to like hear all that at once, you know. And it was just like kind of like a state of shock for a little bit. Like I was very like, okay, wow, now what, you know? Um, most of the fact that like knowing that my life is about to change and be turned around and go through whatever, you know? Um, so yeah, that was the denial part. Like I said, it only lasted like a few months. And then I went into the anger part because now it's starting to become like Kaylee. You have MS. Nothing is different. Nothing is changing. There's no other diagnosis we can give you, you know, like you have MS, you know, so hearing it, seeing it on the MRIs, seeing the facts behind it was like, okay, I have it. Great. You know, so now I started like slowly getting into this part of like being angry because each day that passed started becoming more true, a little bit more true, very true. Now you have it, Keely, and you know you have it, so, yeah. So, that started bringing on the anger part of me realizing that it is, it's there, it's not going anywhere, it's here to stay, you know. So, that was, like, really hard for me to, like, kind of, like, figure out, and I had to figure out on my own. Um, and finally realized that I need to start doing something, you know, like, this is happening, So, it got me very angry. I started doing the why me. Why does this have to happen to me? Why can't it be something that surgery could fix? Or why couldn't it be something that just could be so different and it will go away, you know? And it was really hard. It was really hard to, like, kind of just sit there and think about everything. And when I tell you my brain ran, like, 100 miles per hour all day long of just what if everything, it did all day all night and the next day after that and the next day after that so I refused I was angry with my doctors like I said in other videos um super angry at them even though they were trying to help me like wanted nothing to do with them angry at my parents angry at life angry at the world angry at random people that weren't doing anything to me just angry with everyone I was so mad and I started getting to the point where, like, I refused to tell people. Like, I just, I was angry about it. I was so, like, I don't have it. Like, I'm not going to have this. I'm not, I'm not even going to bring it to anyone's attention, you know. Obviously, people knew, and when people asked, I would just, like, yeah, okay, move on, you know. So, that was part of my angry stage. Um, So, leaning out of the angry stage took super long. Now, very long. I was... I'm talking maybe like a few years man like I was super angry and then it kind of fall fell into like the bargaining part which really didn't go through bargaining part I mean when I look back I yeah I was like okay like I'll, I'll change my life like if this just could not be true if this could just all be a dream like and I'll wake up and it never even happened you know and I I wished I like prayed I hoped I just wanted like everything to change and I just what if I could have done something different? What if I could have not did something and it would have just never happened, you know? But this just, guys, like, this this disease, it, I mean, they say, like, if you live in these parts of, like, the United States, they're like, blah, blah, blah. There's things like how MS gets brought on, I don't know. But they even say it's not hereditary. My grandfather has it and I have it. My parents don't have it, you know? But it's just something that happens and it's just another bump in the road that we just have to keep chugging along go up that hill you know and that's how I look at life like life is like a hill you know there's gonna be easy parts and there's gonna be hard parts that you have to go up and sometimes there's like a really hard part and you fall back down the hill and you have to just work your way back up that's how I looked at this it was a part in the road that I fell down the hill and now I just have to keep working my way up you know I mean I didn't think of it back then but as I started accepting it, that's when I started, okay, it's just a hill, you know, um, but I'll explain more of that at the end, so, as I started doing all that, like, I promised, like, everything's gonna change, blah, 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 like, you know, and I kind of got all that stage super fast, like, I really didn't go through the bargaining part, 
um, talk myself out of, like, maybe it could be something different. I don't know if that falls in the bargaining part, but I did that a lot. Maybe it's just something different. The doctors don't even know what they're talking about, and I may just not, not have MS, you know? But that kind of went by fast, and then I kind of worked into the depression stage because now things are starting to become even more real and more true and things are changing and I'm starting to realize that this is here and it's here to stay and it's not going anywhere. There's nothing to cure it. So I either sit and be angry or I have to start working at it, you know, and that was a little bit after depression. But as I started going to the depression stage, it started becoming like super true and nights were super hard because at night I mean you lay down and you go through your whole day and then you get through your whole day and then you're just like wow like my life is all ahead of me and being like 16 15 17 like at that age like was super hard because like you're so young and you haven't even made it through high school yet and you're already worried about what am I going to be like when I'm 40? Or what am I going to be like when I'm 30, you know? And all those thoughts started getting even more hard to deal with because it's like, it was sad. And I hated feeling so sad because when I look at myself before being diagnosed with MS, I was super happy, outgoing, never had any worries. And if I did, I just, whatever, you know? Like, I literally just went through life with worry-free and just was so happy with everything, so grateful for everything. And when that happened, it was just like my whole world changed. And I refused to be sad in front of people because I always was that outgoing, funny, happy person. And that's where like my depression part was like, you should never hide that you are sad or that you need someone to talk to, but you won't. Because I did that. And honestly, I'm different. Like, I'm okay with that because I I had my close friends and close family members that I would talk to and that was my venting session and then I'd go on with life, you know. But some people, like, if you are going through something, you need to reach out to somebody. It helps even if you don't think it does. Always reach out to somebody. But back to story, I honestly, I kept it behind, behind doors that I was behind doors I was super sad I was upset with the whole fact that I have MS and now what's going to happen to my life you know but like behind, outside of all that I was always like trying to like be there for everyone put everyone first put others feelings first put others problems before mine you know and I was always just that person and it it kind of like I'll never forget when I was at this MS walk people started recognizing me because Obviously, yeah, I was super young being diagnosed at the Mellon Center, and I was at this MS walk, and people even noticed me, like, oh my god, like, I just wanted to say I've seen you in treatments, and you're so funny, like, you make my treatments so much better, and hearing that I'm making somebody else's day better made me feel like, okay, at least they're happy, you know what I mean? At least I'm making them happy, because I'm, I, I feel like I am super strong, uh, mentally and personality wise like I can I was able to do that you know but it's still I was still super sad and I was happy to just be there for somebody and be like you know what at least I'm like even though treatment sucked sometimes but I did have fun with the people that my nurses were awesome and the people that were in there were super nice so I was happy to be there for people you know and I feel like I've always been that type of person and leading up to that I mean obviously before I get to that then also that played a big part of the depression was my most scariest thing was like your brain is like besides your heart which keeps you alive but your brain is literally like something that functions your whole body and seeing on MRIs that there is something on my brain like those lesions scared the crap out of me for I I don't know if it scares you guys as much but it scared the crap out of me because like like knowing something that's on my brain scared me and it was kind of hard also because it made me also fell into depression because I was super upset like why does it have to be on my brain you know like it was just it just sucked like the depression stage sucked because I was everyone thought I was fine but I was really fighting inside like fighting to get through this fighting to just 
be happy. I feel like I wanted to be happy, but like in the back of my head, it was always like, you gotta must stop being happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I felt like. And after all of that, the fake smiles and all that kind of stuff, I started slowly, which also before I end, that I was still super negative during the depression spot. It got worse as like time went on, but following of this year, literally like I said in previous videos, a few months ago maybe, no, not a few months ago, like beginning of 2021, I think it was, yeah, beginning of 2021, is when I kind of started like, okay, I need to either stay here being sad and upset and hating everything, being this sad person, or start being a motivational person, start looking at the good things. I mean, when I say good things, you're probably like, what the heck is good about having MS? Let me know. Okay, not saying it like that. But when we sit and we look at everything bad, it makes you sad, doesn't it? But why not flip it all around, start looking at the good things in life, okay? It could have been worse. I have a roof over my head. I started naming everything good in my life, you know? Things could be worse. And I started becoming more grateful, a lot more grateful for everything. And being grateful that it's just MS. And now it's my time to turn my life around, start being positive. I started literally every time I wanted to say something negative, held it in. Hardest thing ever, which when you're negative for so long and seeing something that you want to be like negative about, no, turn it around, said something positive. And that's where I started also putting myself first, putting my problems first, my feelings first. Everything that I was going through, I put it first. And that's where I started becoming accepting, becoming accepting, started accepting that I have MS. It isn't going anywhere and that's okay. And it's not curable, which is also okay because I can fight it. And that life, I have a whole life ahead of me. Why sit here and be sad when I can just go and make others happy now? Because I have put myself first. I have figured myself out. I have figured all my things that I needed to do. Now I can be there for other people, you know? And I love it now because I'm so happy now. And I have accepted it. And I can make something out of it, honestly, you know? Be there for others help others that are literally just now getting diagnosed and are probably going to go through all these stages help them get through it you know um it is still hard i'm not gonna say like oh yeah i'm winging it now like i'm perfectly fine i feel great every day no most of the days i feel like crap but i get through it because i keep my head on my shoulders i keep my head up high keep the positive vibes around you know and that's what you have to do guys like once you accept your disease, you just got to get through it and you think of everything positive that you can. Make your bad days good. You know, I still have bad days. Trust me. I look fine from the outside. But on the inside, sometimes I'm like struggling hard. And, you know, I just got to keep my head up, keep positive, you know, take my meds, do my treatments and whatnot, and get through it, you know, and you can do it. Trust me. I want everyone that's watching this video literally right now. I don't care where you're at. If you're at a restaurant in your car or outside right now, say that I can do it. I am so strong and I'm going to get through today. You know, even when you do have bad days or you're upset, take a nap, wake up and start over like it didn't happen, you know, to get through something that's so life-changing, you have to just keep looking at the positives out of it. Positives. Positive, positive things out of it. Um, so, yeah, now I am where I am. I've went through all those stages. And, I mean, again, 20-minute video. But it did sound short. But it was a very long time. 
2015 up until 2020-21. You guys can do it. I know you can. If you need help at all, seriously, please reach out to me. I don't care who you are. And even if you don't even have MS, reach out to me. I don't care. But I love it when you guys reach out to me. Um, keep it up. You guys got this. If you're having a bad day, you got it. Think of all the positives. Stay tuned. Next video, I'm hoping to get the Q&A in if I get enough questions. So you know where that means. Go put your questions below or go to my Instagram or yeah, email, whatever. Just send me as many questions so I can make this video. <laughs> okay, so stay tuned, guys. Love you all. Stay strong. We got this. I hope you guys have a great day, night, morning, whatever. See you guys later. Bye. Where's the camera at? Okay.